If this is your first time ever watching a video on this channel and you came to me looking for a lengthy, in-depth discussion of absolutely everything that happened on this show, then go to the search option on YouTube, type in WWE Raw Review 827 2017 and go watch somebody damn else. Because I'm not going to waste my time this week talking about crap that doesn't matter. The people that know, the people that have already taken the plunge and hashtag subscribe or die to this channel just like you should have come to me to talk about the things that matter of which there were quite a few things on this show that actually mattered. They want some fire. They want some passion in the belly. And by God, they're going to get it. Now, it just feels like I'm missing something. What could it be? Oh, dear Lord, what could it be? I mean, I'm looking good. I feel good. I smell all right. What is it? That felt good. Let's talk about Raw this week, bitches. So you kick off the show right away. The IC title battle royal. And what I mean is you got 15 men. The winner gets to face The Miz next week for the Intercontinental Championship. And it was hilarious to me to see Clean Shaven Big Show. It's like he went to Kurt Angle and said, Oh, you think when your head shaved you look like a penis? Hold my beer. Just saying. And it's crazy too because... As much as the internet in recent weeks, we've talked this and that about Jason Jordan and the stupidity of the angle, different things about how he's going to be irrelevant very quickly. A Memphis crowd that usually doesn't care actually found a reason to pop a little bit for Jason Jordan. So I'm saying if you could pop a Memphis crowd in your WWE, that's got to mean something somewhere, doesn't it? And thank God almighty, Finn Balor didn't freaking win. Unfortunately for him, that means he gets yet another match against Bray Wyatt and my sympathies are with him because he's already done the demon paint at SummerSlam what's he gonna do paint demon paint around his asshole at no mercy so now Bray Wyatt's gonna win who gives a crap I don't moving on and I have to say this battle royal was a surprise they had Jeff Hardy win it was weird because like at one point in time, when you had the stuff going on with Matt and Anderson and Gallows, Jeff's over here and Miz interferes over here. I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't Jeff get involved with this? But it made perfect sense when everything came full circle at the end. And it's interesting that they had Jeff Hardy win. It's weird. And it's a very pleasant surprise. One of those things you didn't anticipate. You would have thought somebody like a Jason Jordan would have won this. It was like it was telegraphed that it was going to be him. And it freaking wasn't. And that was cool. Maybe we're getting close to the Hardys being able to do something actually worth a crap now that they're back with WWE. Let's hope so. But Jeff Hardy versus The Miz for the IC title next week? Sure, what the hell, why not? Which is apparently what Enzo has said to be coming a part of the Cruiserweight crew being on 205 Live. And let, let, let me make sure this makes sense to me. So many people backstage don't like the dude. To where they're burying them to other people outside of the company. And, and let me touch on this. To the people that are burying Enzo. I understand he probably annoys you. And frankly he is annoying. And maybe that's affecting some of his popularity with the fans in recent weeks. Because some of these stories are getting out. Which is dumb. But that's the way it fucking goes nowadays. How about instead of hating on Enzo. How about you worry about being better at your goddamn job. Because all of these annoying factors at play and all the crap they've done to sabotage him, the fact is he can still get some type of reaction unlike the majority of the freaking roster and un most certainly unlike the majority of the freaking roster, he can actually cut a goddamn promo. He has some personality. He has some charisma. A lot of you can't go back to fucking school to get it because you never had it to fucking begin with and it doesn't grow on trees. Some people have it and some people don't. And most of the people probably shitting on Enzo clearly do not have it. But... So we take Enzo, who annoys people, and now we potentially expose him to both the Raw and SmackDown locker rooms instead of just keeping him isolated on Raw. Seems like an odd decision. The one thing I'll say about this match with Noam Dar is it was really short, which is what it needed to be, but Enzo, Gail Kim called, and she wants her botched eat-defeat finisher back. Just saying. 
The beauty of this show was we didn't get a long pontificating promo for Paul Heyman, even though you thought this is where we were going to go, and it was going to be blah, 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 everybody thinks I'm awesome, blah, 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 let me say the same exact shit, no, we got the best Paul Heyman promo in quite a while, why, is because Brock Lesnar put an end to this shit, he grabbed that mic and he said, suplex city, bitch, to Braun Strowman, and frankly, that's all you needed, and that's all that needed to be said, exit out the fucking ring, thank you, goodbye, see you at No Mercy, or right before No Mercy, maybe on the Raw before, I don't know. But that segment was good. Short, sweet, and to the point, and minimize the amount of time Heyman talked. If you don't like that I said that, eat shit, I don't care. Tired of his lengthy promos all the time, following the same pattern and trend. If you're going to shit on Cena for doing it, as you should, then you sure as hell need to on Paul Heyman. Ta ta today, Junior, let's mix it up a fucking little bit. At least here, it was mixed up. I'm just saying. What I don't get, though, is why the WWE expects people to watch pay-per-views on the network, expects them to pay for tickets to go to the shows live, if they're just going to either A, give you the pay-per-view on TV, or B, undercut the pay-per-view immediately on TV. Sasha Banks defending her strap against Alexa Bliss. Sasha Banks is now a four-time women's champion and a former four-time women's champion. What, what is the goal here? What is the end game for doing this dumb shit with her? Why would you sit there at SummerSlam and put the strap on her when she was the backup bitch to Bailey? She wasn't even the primary option. Why in the bluest of blue fucks would you take that strap off of Alexa Bliss when it wasn't even the original plan via Sasha Banks? You didn't need to. You didn't have to. You shouldn't have. Even during No Mercy, you're sitting there running this creepy Harley Quinn crap with freaking Alexa Bliss. So now you have her drop the strap at SummerSlam just so that way we come back here on Raw eight days later and Alexa's getting the belt right fucking back. This hot potato shit of the belt is for the fucking Russos. This is ridiculous. And to sit there and say, well, after the match was over, you got the crap of Nia Jax and she pulled the old freaking Batista. We're going to drop her on her back, bitches. You could have done that shit at SummerSlam after Alexa fucking won. You could have had Nia Jax interfere. You could have just had her come out and celebrate afterwards and then done it. Again, if you're just going to continue to do this shit on TV, then why would anybody feel the need to subscribe to the network and watch the special events, watch the pay-per-views? And what, again, was the whole point of putting that strap on Sasha Banks to be a transitional champ to hand it right back to Alexa Bliss? Unbelievable. And how stupid it was that this, of all things, was the fucking main event of Raw. Just all types of dumb and idiotic. There is no purpose, no point on Sasha even winning that fucking belt in the first place, let alone you have her win it and then her first title defense again, she loses it again. If you're trying to tell me you're making a story out of that, well, you need to rip up the fucking book because your story sucks. Unbelievable. And then the big story, which again, didn't even main event because ultimately, Cena fans have got to get to bed by 9.30. And I'm not just talking about the ones that are still in school. I'm talking about the adult ones that used to be the fucking kid ones that still live at home with their mommy and maybe their daddy, but in most cases, probably just their mommy. The big John Cena and Roman Reigns face-off. As I'm watching this the whole time, I'm just thinking to myself, how stupid stupid it is for this company to throw this out there so soon. And you already have Braun versus Brock and No Mercy. You've already got your main event. You've already got your big match. Why would you feel the need to throw this on a secondary pay-per-view? Why wouldn't we even at least wait until Survivor Series where this match could actually main event? Let alone, God forbid, God forbid we have the patience to give this program the proper platform it deserves, whether you like it or not, which is WrestleMania. Even if you're not interested, even if you hate both of these freaking clowns, the simple fact of the matter is, from a purely business standpoint, 
Who in the hell thinks that this is a better idea to include this for No Mercy as opposed to WrestleMania? From a creative standpoint, it makes more sense to let it simmer and build slowly and get to it come WrestleMania. This is a big freaking deal. This is one of the few monster money matches this company has left. And watching this whole segment the whole time just reinforced how ridiculous it was that we already have a contract signing and we technically aren't even in September yet and No Mercy is almost four goddamn weeks away. And then you gotta have a tag match afterwards. Give me a break. And of course so many people, because they're blinded by the Roman hate, both fair and not so fair, are talking about how badly Cena buried Roman on the mic and he's shooting and... Oh my God, these are the same people that think that Punk went out there and cut 100% shoot six years ago with his pipe bomb. If you don't think that was a work shoot, you're a moron. Vince is not putting anything on TV by design. Just like this segment was by design to do specific things for specific reasons. He's not putting it out there and not having it scripted or planned out to some degree. So Cena didn't go off the reservation. Cena didn't start shooting. This is all one big work shoot and it's mostly bullshit. Because it's easy for one guy to look better than the other guy when, frankly, the one guy in Cena is intentionally given better material. He's given more time to talk. He's given more freedom to talk. He's given more creative license to work with what he has to say. And that's not even to say that Roman didn't say some good things. But frankly, we're at this point now where we're talking about who's burying who in a fucking work shoot. Give me a fucking break. And all these years later, it's still about John. Like, even this whole segment, I'm just watching it. Cena's the one teeing it up. Cena's the one setting the plate. Cena's the one that wants this. They're presenting it like this is all about Cena. That Cena came over to Raw because he wants to have this match. And just all this other dumb shit. And the, the way the whole promo is, seg is segmented out. You're trying to make Roman look bad. And while sure, some people get their absolute jollies off of this, whatever, fine. The fact is, the dude just beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. He's main evented, what, three straight WrestleManias now? You don't sabotage that type of guy. He's not a golden goose, grant you, like a Hogan in Austin or a Rock. <clears throat> He's more like a gray gander, okay? But he's your replacement. He's your Cena 2.0, if you will. And you most certainly as fuck would never put Cena in this type of situation because even a decade ago, Cena was delivering the same barbs and getting the same type of advantages naturally built in to make himself look better that he's still getting fucking today as the part-time two-pump chump. So while it's easy to get sucked in for the hardcore fans and talk about how this was a great promo segment because it was a fucking work shoot, the laziest type of promo you can fucking cut, the simple fact of the matter is, is it pisses me off in a way because after all these years, it's still about the 40-year-old fucking flat top fucking wannabe John Cena. And it's not even at the right time. It's so ludicrous and so ridiculous that we can't have the patience to wait just a few more fucking months to do this where it belongs, to do this when the timing is right. You're taking a big time match like this, whether you want to admit it's a big time match or not, I could give a fuck less because remember, OTRS Central, is not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need, which means at times I have to present you with some inconvenient truths that you know really metamorphosis into being facts. And the fact is, is this is one of the biggest money matches this company has. And I understand there's a portion that says, well, why not do it at a secondary pay-per-view to elevate that secondary pay-per-view? Well, frankly, one, based on what you did, how much do the pay-per-views really matter? Two, you've already got Braun versus Brock. You've already got your big money main event type of match there. At least, if anything else, if you're going to rush it before WrestleMania, do it at another big four. Do it at fucking Survivor Series. Don't sit there and throw this away. This special attraction, this first time mega match, 
for all intents and purposes, that we get so few of in today's WWE because they just can't fucking wait because it's all about today. It's never about tomorrow. Unbelievable. It's just bullshit. And after all these years still, and you fucks can sit there and bitch about Roman, and yeah, he's boring his bricks half the time. And I most certainly would not have him be my top guy. But the fact is, is that after the decade of doom of John Cena, nobody is as bad as him. I promise you. And if you think Roman Reigns is bad or worse, then you've got another thing coming. And I resent the fact that the WWE would send Roman out there into a situation just like they've done with so many other people over so many years and intentionally trying to sabotage the guy to artificially prop up Cena. Cena is no golden goose. He is nothing more than a wannabe. And my God, I wish I could have been there to write Roman's work shoot promo for him because he would have clowned Cena six ways from Sunday. It was served up on a tee. <clears throat> All he had to do was swing. But the WWE wasn't going to let him swing. Fuck this company for rushing this match. Fuck this company for all these years later still trying to protect Cena. Fuck this company for all these years later still trying to make Cena be out to be the guy. Because he's not. And the only reason he ever was was because he was a pathetic prop for the WWE. You want to shoot? That's a shoot. If you're a top guy that saw millions of fans turn away, people can give all the excuses in the world. The bottom line is, is you weren't good enough to get the job done. And the company was too stubbornly stuck on you to realize there were perhaps better alternatives and ways to go. We'll see what happens at No Mercy, but the way they presented this shit almost makes me think Cena's going over. And if that's the case, then fuck this company truly.